What breaks a nation? To understand this, we must understand both political and religious history, starting with origin versus Celsus. Now, Origen is a Christian author during the time when, in Roman history, when Christians were persecuted, were still being persecuted, hundreds of years after Christ had died. Um, and he talked about you know, reincarnation being a plausible explanation for how God institutes um, the saving of a soul, for instance. And uh, his understanding of reincarnation, even through the Christian filter, is one of the reasons why I like Origen. Now Celsus, Celsus also has a good point to make. He says that when a pagan looks through, and he didn't use the word pagan, but when somebody looks through a single god, a god that they, their, their kin and themselves have been close to, have been worshiping, have been viewing divinity through for a long time, um, when we look through that god, then we are acknowledging the divine. We are understanding uh, the cosmos. We are basically worshiping the one God through our personal God. Now, Celsus had an interesting idea about how Christians were actually polytheistic, whereas <laughs> pagans were monotheistic. This is a very interesting idea. Uh, Celsus believes that uh, because Christians thought that you know, there was one God who also had an adversary that could counter his power somehow, that because they had cre created an equal adversary for the one God, this introduced a dualistic system. Now, his understanding of paganism, and many pagans themselves believe this, uh, was that if you worshipped your familiar God, uh, the one that you were close to either through your city, through your family, through your personhood as an individual in society. The one that you looked up to, you were worshipping the divine as a whole. The combination of all the divine that instituted reality, that instituted cre basically creation and, ex and existence. You just looked through this one filter and you were worshipping the divine through it. Now, Celsus was very... Uh, pragmatic in the sense that he understood that worshiping one God among many and you know acknowledging that everyone else was worshiping one God through their own filters uh, was basically understanding that their pagan religion was monotheistic because despite all the different filters they were all looking towards the one source and origin he claimed Celsus claimed was dividing the power in the universe between God and the devil, which means that each had a power to basically inflict good and inflict evil. Now, if the devil has the power to inflict evil, to even uh, counter God in any way, then obviously there are two, two gods of equal power rather than every person have, having their own filter, their own God filter, to worship the one whole source divine. Um, now, as far as Celsus's, you know, damnation of Christians and saying that they should be killed because they're basically trying to go against the divine order of allowing multiple kinds of worship through different gods, uh, the acknowledgement that different gods are basically alluding to the one source, that is going way too far. To say that anybody should be killed because of their religious, spiritual, or political beliefs is ridiculous because that destroys the ability for a forum to exist and for human beings to move forward. Origen, on the other hand, his father was killed by, and that's Origen with a E-N at the end, not an I-N. Origen's father was killed because he was Christian. He became a, mod a martyr, basically. And then Origen later on became a martyr. He was tortured horrifically and then killed. And he understood that tyrants will often claim the common belief as their own and say that anyone else who has a new belief that counters the general uh, belief system, the, the common belief system among the people, among the aristocracy, among the plebeians and the patricians, uh, anybody who counters that is is a, is a cult. They called the Christians cult worshippers, and that 
they were in fact trying to say that anyone who didn't believe like them were basically evil. They were on the side of the devil. And a lot of Christians did say this, that anybody who did not believe in the God that Jesus Christ proclaimed and that Jesus Christ was the only Son of God, anybody who didn't do that was on the side of the devil, was on the side of evil, was on the side of uh, demons. Uh, they're called demons at the time, but we know them now in English as demons. Now, the, these two sides of the equation are both going too far when it comes to spiritual and religious beliefs. Because one side says, okay, if you're against anything that isn't Christian, then you're evil. And the other side says, if you don't acknowledge that there's multiple gods and that all these different gods are worshipping the same source, the one god, then obviously you're trying to take down the established order. Both sides are incorrect because they are both extreme. Now, I favor Origen in so many of his writings, but it was extreme to think that just because one acknowledges uh, a pantheon of gods and worships the one source through any one of these gods, any, any one of them either in the Roman pantheon or the Egyptian or any other pantheon, that they are essentially on the side of the devil. But Origen also said that anyone who is basically hostile to Christianity is on the side of the devil. So he could, be, he could have been referring to anyone who was just hostile to Christianity and not necessarily um, just because they believed in a God that the Christians did not acknowledge or a name of God that the Christians did not acknowledge. Because in Judaism, there are many names for God. Uh, there are many, many names for God. So any one of those names are viable. But Christianity tore away from Judaism very early on, very early on. Uh, so let's go to let's go to the idea that what happened when you know the Christians were just coming about in the Roman Empire. Um, the Christians were persecuted. They were tortured. They were thrown into gladiatorial arenas to be torn apart by beasts, to be raped, um, to be basically persecuted in every level of society as criminals because they were going against the established order. Now. When Christianity finally became the dominant religion in the Roman Empire, you know, <laughs> hundreds of years later, Christians did very similar things. They decided to tear apart uh, temples that were to pagan gods. They decided to not allow any pagan worship in the public. And then it became to where if you had any proof against you that you worship pagan gods, you were executed. Pagans did it first, and then Christians. They did the same thing, and it was kind of a cycle of revenge on the Christian side, because they were taking revenge on the pagans. Maybe they didn't do this consciously, but they, they did this subconsciously. Because to consciously do it, it would be obviously hypocritical. But subconsciously to say, okay, obviously they're demons, and you know, that's what they believed before, but we should take revenge on them like they, they did the actions of violence towards us. That is what is hypocritical. Now... What makes nations fall? This is the religious side. What makes nations fall? It is the not allowing anybody to be counter spiritually or religiously to you. Let's say, you know, there's another nation that believes something else. Then that nation is, is obviously hostile to people who are, are, very, are very religiously dogmatic. And to allow those people to have any kind of trade or immigration to your country is unacceptable to dogmatic people. And then that takes a hand in bringing down a nation because eventually the, the wheel will, t will turn in the opposite direction and those people who you thought were demons and were thought, you know, you thought to be less than human, those are the ones that will eventually have power because the cycle of of nature in relation to man and man in relation to God continues to circle and circle and circle. So when those others that you had considered evil eventually have power, how are they going to treat you? Are they going to treat you any better than you treated them? No, it is. that's not going to happen. They're going to treat you exactly how you treated them. And then once your people regain power, then you're going to treat them the same way. The cycle of revenge continues and continues and continues. That's why in all true passages, in any scripture, 
we find that revenge is basically tossed aside, saying revenge is terrible and you should never follow it. You should never take revenge on an enemy. And you should only seek to secure basically your own defense. Defense, not offense. And make sure that even if you, you, know, you win in your defense, you have to basically acknowledge those other people as being human. As being those that you want to trade with. Those that you want to basically allow immigrants to come into your country through. And then, you know, your immigrants going to their country. There has to be an open lane of exchange of both people and goods. Not people in the sense of slavery. But allowing citizens that want to go there. Allowing them to go. And the ones that want to come here. Allowing them to come. Now, this is, this is the way that nations don't fall. An open line of trade, an open line of acknowledgement of a right to exist, an open acknowledgement of the rights of your own citizens to basically immigrate to their own country and immigrate to your own. Now, there is a political polarity that we have to discuss when we're talking about how a nation breaks. Uh, now, in the United States of America, we have a government that seems very polarized. But in the past, at the very beginning of the United States, we can look at the Federalists versus the Anti-Federalists. Those who believed in a strong federal government versus those who did not believe in a strong federal government. And, you know, ideally, the Federalists are the Democrats nowadays, and the, the Anti-Federalists are the Republicans nowadays. But the interesting thing is, uh, during the 60s and around, you know, the 1960s, um, when this was taking place, a lot of Dixiecrats, you know, Dixiecrats were all for the people when it was just white people. But when it became, you know, black people and the Democratic Party decided to, you know, as a majority embrace helping out minorities, then that's when a lot of Dixiecrats went to the Republican Party. And then conservative, conservatism and liberalism kind of switched places. So... A lot of the Dixiecrats went to the Republican Party and influenced pro the Republican Party from then on out. And, you know, the 1960s wasn't that long ago. So a lot of the influence that the Dixiecrats had on the Republican Party continues to flourish. And the Democratic Party has chosen to embrace all peoples. Now, this happened in the 1960s. This is much later after the, <laughs> anti the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. But uh, this is, you know, a political shift that still held the same polarization between the two parties. Now, nowadays, in the United States of America, it really feels like there's this, this, political, um, this political extremism that honestly does lead to the breaking of nations. When we have an honest political argument, you know, between one side and another, where there are a lot of moderates in between, and there's not this extreme polarization of everybody either being on the conservative or liberal side, but there's a lot of trying to basically cross the aisle in between, a lot of moderates, that's when a nation can be preserved, can continue to flourish. But when we have this extreme divide between even the information that the Democrats and Republicans acknowledge, that's when we start to tear apart. Because information itself, it, it should be unbiased. But recently it feels like it's been increasingly biased. So all the information that a party works off of basically determines its, its political agenda, its doctrine, what it will do in the immediate future. But if we can't even agree on the information, the accuracy of the information, then that's when our, our awareness of each other becomes extremely, extremely, ex uh, you know, kind of contrary to the other party, no matter what side you're on. Now, I feel as if both parties have been extremely conservative in the recent, in the recent history of the United States, uh, far more conservative than they have in the past. And it's because the Democrats have given up so much, and the Republicans basically take as much as they, as much as they can. And I mean, who wouldn't? If the Democrats keep on giving up ground, who wouldn't continue to take as much as they can if they're on an opposing side? And this increases the extremism of not only the political parties, you know, the, the liberals tearing away from the Democrats and the Democrats kind of 
shifting to the middle, but shifting towards more conservative if they keep on giving ground. And then you have the liberals on the other side, and then you have the extreme conservatives who keep on taking, and then there are others in the conservative party who tear away and like, okay, if we're going to be able to take as much as we want, then boom. And this isn't always conscious. I mean, this isn't always like uh, a decision like, okay, we're going to take as much as we want. It's a lot of it's subconscious. If you keep on getting what you want, you're going to take more and more, and you're not going to care about even the constituents of the democratic side. So as we see this tearing, we're seeing the, the moderate nature of politics slowly disappearing as Democrats shift towards the conservative side, despite whatever the news says. And as we see, you know, a few liberals like Bernie Sanders shift towards the liberal side. And this is, this is basically tender for some extreme political movements coming in the future. Because if you have one side of the United States represented, you know, the extreme right, and I'm using your right, I'm using my left, <laughs> but the extreme right, um, if we see their interests, you know, basically dictated to the rest of America, we're going to see a lot of people say, okay, well, if I'm liberal at all, then I, I can't go as far as you're going to the conservative side, so I have to obviously go to this extreme. Because the Democrats are going with you, so I have to go to this extreme and tear away from it. So, despite the propaganda, for instance, Barack Obama was not a Maoist. He was not, he was not a Marxist. He, he was brought to the conservative side through an extreme level of concessions that he allowed himself to be pulled into. And then the amount of liberals we have in our government is so few now. But... The fact that there are people that need to be helped and there are people that need to be not only taken care of as far as the elderly and social security and the medical care of children and the, the housing for the most impoverished of us and the fact that we're spending too much on military and we could sp spend far more on, co on the college for everyone. $40 billion was in everybody in the United States of college. And we could provide medical care for everyone in the United States if we just cut our military budget by a fourth to a third, which we don't even need our whole military budget. But, but besides getting into these nitty-gritty details, these aren't even nitty-gritty, but besides getting in, into these details of politics, uh, we see this, this polarization, this tearing apart, just like it started in Rome with the plebeians and the patricians, the, the, the representatives of the, of, the, of the people, which was kind of like the House and our current... United States government and the Senate, which is kind of like, which was like the pat patricians in the Roman government, um, we see we see that these things have happened in the past, and having a president like Donald Trump come forward uh, feels a lot like when the emperors started to basically come about in Rome. Uh, you know, at one point it was voting in Rome. And then eventually it became emperors. And then when the emperor started to polarize the political and religious environment, that's when the entire world started to turn against the emperors. So this history feels like it's repeating itself. It feels like our nation can, can break just like Rome did on religious and political lines. And this is, a, this is not a video about saying, you know, I have all the answers. This is a video of warning. We must be careful to not tread on the same ground as human beings that we have in the past. Because it feels like we're going the same direction and we haven't yet learned. The worst part of a human being is to forget what every human being before him has learned. And this feels like what we're doing again and again and again. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up down there. And uh, if you have any comments, a lot of you probably disagree with me. Shoot it down in the comment section below. If you agree with me, shoot it down there as well. But uh, I hope to see all of you in the future. And let's hope that I'm wrong about the polarization and what it's leading to. And let's hope that this is just a hiccup and this is not indicative of what has happened in the past. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all have a great day.